I will be bringing tonight's lesson, Eyewitnesses of Jesus' Ministry. I will read our scripture, and if I can get Deacon Todd to open us up in prayer. Yes, our sir. Script, our yes, scripture is going to be coming from Acts chapter 1, verse 3. I'm reading from the King James Version. King James Version. To these he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. There's Acts chapter 1, verse 3, King James Version. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Our God, Heavenly Father, we come again. Great God, just to say thank you, God. We thank, thank you, God, you. for this great day, God. Another great day that you bestowed upon us, God. Thank we just love you for all of your greatness. We, we, we love you, God, for your privileges. We love you, God, for your blessings upon all of us, God. You're such a great God. Mm. And you've done so many things for us, God, that we just can't tell it all. So we just simply say we just thank you, God. We thank, thank you, God, you. for your grace and your mercy upon all of us. Yes. Again, you're so mighty and you're so strong and you're so <laughs> so great with all of us, God. We just mm -hmm. want to say thank you. We thank you. for the privilege to come together as men of all of it. Just to study your word and just to share your word and just to learn from your word, God. We pray a yeah. special blessing upon our, our lesson giver this evening, yes. Brother Burgess, God. We ask you to be with him, God. Mm. Share mm. your thoughts with him, God, so he can yes. share your words with us. And mm -hmm. then help us to have open ears and open hearts and open minds yes. to be able to hear not only you, digest what it is that you placed upon us, God. We again thank you for this mighty great day. We thank you, God, yes. for your grace and mercy upon all of us. Yes, sir. We yeah. just thank you for the privilege just to be thank amongst you. your land and to be your children and to be your yes. servants, God. Again, we mm -hmm. thank you for all you've done, all you're going to do. In all Jesus' you. name I pray. Amen. 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 Good evening, brothers. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to everybody. Uh, tonight's lesson, I used a couple of references. Uh, I'm going to use some information from our study guide. I also got some information from BibleDork.org. A series titled Historical Reliability of the Gospel, Eyewitness Testimony in Luke's Gospel. And this is an article by Richard Buckham. Richard Balcom. He was an English Anglican scholar in theology, historical theology, and New Testament studies, specializing in New Testament Christianity and the Gospel of John. I also have some information from the Bible says dot com. <laughs> the eyewitness testimony in Luke's gospel, because we have two sets of scripture here. Luke chapter 24, verses 44 through 49 and Acts chapter one, verses one through 11. This is from eyewitness testimony um, an article by Richard Bachman. Luke was very much concerned to base his gospel on the earliest and best eyewitnesses who went back all the way to the beginning of Jesus' ministry. In Luke chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, it reads, Since many have undertaken to arrange in proper order an account of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as from the beginning, the eyewitnesses and those becoming ministers of the word handed down to us. So also it seemed good to me accurately following and investigating everything from the first to write to you in order and account most excellent, Theophilus, so that you may know that the certainty of the words of the gospel you have been taught. So from these four lines, this opening, this this four verses, we can learn these four things about the importance of eyewitness testimony. And in, in. first, the key word is eyewitness, which in Greek is autopathy, and that's where we get the word autopsy from. But in this sense, uh, Luke is using it not as a medical term. But it's a historiographical one. It means those who are firsthand observers or those with personal firsthand experience, those who know the facts at firsthand. 
Second, the notion of principal eyewitnesses having to go back to the beginning of Jesus' ministry was just plain common sense. The Gospel of John also has the word beginning as a criterion for reliable and authoritative testimony. That's John chapter 15, verses 26 and 27. John writes, you also, in addition to the Spirit, are to be witnesses because you have been with me from the beginning. And you can also look at John chapter 6, verse 64, chapter 8, verse 25. First John chapter 2, verse 17 and 13, chapter 3, verse 8, and Second John chapter 6. These parallel data in Luke and John indicate that the principal eyewitness sources were qualified to provide a comprehensive account of the events, not in a sterile sense, but in active living sense. By the time the eyewitnesses and ministers of the word were passing on their participatory eyewitness testimony, they understood that the Jesus movement had, a, had the backing of God. Jesus was raised from the dead. His movement was going around the known world. It was time for Luke to write his account while the eyewitnesses themselves were still circulating around the Christian communities as living voices and transmitters. Third, the words from the first, that's in verse three, could be translated from way back. They signify that Luke is familiar with the earliest traditions and this kind of historical source was remarkably, remarkably important for the way that the traditions about Jesus were transmitted and understood in early Christianity. Just as the scope of the eyewitness testimony was comprehensive, covering the whole story, Luke's Gospels had to tell from the beginning. So Luke's thorough familiar familiarity with an understanding of this testimony were equally comprehensive. Luke can tell the story from the beginning because he is familiar with the condition of those who were eyewitnesses from the beginning. Fourth and finally, the certainty or truth of the words of the gospel is directly related to eyewitness testimony that exists, that exists from the beginning. The earliest writers and tra traditions transmitters of the ministry of Jesus sought to nail down truth and certainty by proclaiming their eyewitness participation in the events or by passing on the stories of those who were eyewitness participants. Luke incorporated their testimonies and reports. So basically Luke was, was basically using the eyewitness testimony of people who were around when Jesus was doing his work. And so that's back then, certain people had credibility with things they said, there was no fake news. And that is how news traveled around by word of mouth. And so there were people, uh, oracles as we call them, that people took their words because they, they took their job seriously. They were the oral, the orators of history and actual events going on. So, you know, and there, like I said, there also was other people were telling the same story, not because they heard it, because they were actually there in proximity. So, you know, when two or three people are telling the same thing, you know, that adds validity to it. The Gospel of Luke is based squarely on the eyewitness testimony of the followers of Jesus from the beginning of his ministry in Israel about four decades before the destruction of the Jerusalem temple in 70 AD. Both John and Luke agree that eyewitness testimony has a special status in their gospels. Evidently in the early Christian movement, a special importance attached to the testimony of disciples who had been eyewitnesses 
of the whole ministry of Jesus from the beginning, when John was baptized into Jesus' resurrection appearances, this was a necessary qualification for membership of the Twelve. But there were also other disciples who fulfilled the qualification and whose witnesses would have been especially valuable for that reason. Luke follows the common sense notion that the closer one gets to the source, in this case to Jesus' ministry, the more likely this proximity works as a bulwark against error and for, for truth and reliability. So, you know, we all remember as kids playing the telephone game, you know, by the third person, you know, the story might have been true, but when you pass it along among everybody else, by the time you get to the end, you know, you know, it resembles, resembles nothing. So the good thing about the Gospels of the Apostles was that they were actually close to the action and part of the action. So that provided validity to what was going on. And that was in the known world. So we're talking about a geographical area that wasn't widespread, but word of mouth was how news traveled. And so that was the importance of being disciples because they actually seen the miracles. They were there with the miracles that Jesus performed. They actually sit and, and listen to the lessons he taught them. And so even though it took them a while to kind of understand what their purpose was. Now I'm going to go to Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. Now, the book of Acts was written by Luke, a Gentile believer in Jesus and a physician. It is a continuation of his gospel, the gospel of Luke mentioned as the first account he composed. The second account, the book of Acts, is addressed to the same man as the gospel was, Theophilus. Luke begins his gospel by explaining that it was based on the personal accounts of eyewitnesses to Jesus' life, which he had investigated carefully. It was written. It was written in an orderly sequence, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the exact truth about the things you have been taught. That's Luke chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. So who is Theophilus? He is not mentioned anywhere else in scripture outside the introductions to Luke and Acts. The name Theophilus comes from two Greek words, theos meaning God and philo, friend. So it means, means friend of God. No one knows if this was a specific person, perhaps a nickname or an alias for a Roman official who was also a believer or it possibly could be a catch-all name for any friend of God who reads Luke's accounts or any believer in Je Jesus. So it seems clear that Luke wrote Acts in large part to validate the teachings and apostolic authority of Paul. Acts would end with Paul under house arrest in Rome. At this time, Christianity was unlawful. So it could be well it could well be that Luke wrote this in such a way to main, maintain anonymity for some to avoid bringing unnecessary persecution. Just as the Gospel of Luke is a historical account of Jesus' ministry on earth, Acts is the historical account for the beginning of the age when the Holy Spirit will dwell within humans. Acts grounds Paul's church letters, the epistles, with apostolic authority and validates his insistence that being justified in the sight of God is apart from following religious regulations. Without the book of Acts, we would not have without the book of Acts, we will not have a testimony to confirm who Paul was. If the book following the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, was Roman written by Paul without acts between there could be considerable doubt as to who this man was and why he had any authority to teach believers in Christ. But the book of Acts establishes who Paul is first as a persecutor of the church 
and then later as one of the greatest ambassadors. This account confirms Paul's apostolic credentials to show that Christ has what show what Christ has done in his life and why we ought to listen to what he has to say in his letters, which includes in Galatians 1 and 2, Theologians 1 and 2, Corinthians, Romans, uh, oh, excuse me, uh, 1 and 2, what, which includes Galatians, 1 and 2, Theologians, 1 and 2, Corinthians, Romans, Ephesians, Philemon, Colossians, Philippians, 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy, Titus, and likely Hebrews. Luke begins Acts with an overlay of where the first account composed ended. The first account being the Gospel of Luke was about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up to heaven. Acts begins on that day Jesus ascended. The things Jesus did during his earthly ministry are recorded in Luke. as well as what he taught. In Acts, we will see Jesus hand the baton to his apostles, including Paul, to spread what he did and taught to the Gentiles. This movement has subsequently spread throughout the world. Before going to heaven, Jesus had by the Holy Spirit given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen. These apostles were the faithful 11 out of the 12 disciples who had followed and served Jesus during his ministry. Apostle means a person who is sent. It is used in the book of Acts to describe the disciples who were sent by Jesus to tell the world about his death and resurrection. Traditionally, apostle is only applied to the 12 disciples after Jesus was replaced and to Paul. These were the prominent leaders who witnessed Jesus firsthand and then founded and nurtured the church as it was birthed and grew. Luke recalls the following order Jesus gave the apostles, which will be amplified in Acts. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ will suffer and rise again from the dead the third day, and that repentance for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending forth the promise of my Father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. That's Luke chapter 24, verses 45 through 49, which was our one of our scriptures readings. Matthew records what is generally referred to as the Great Commission, which is also an order and is quite similar to what Luke says, records. And I'm not going to read that one. Jesus commands the apostles to remain in Jerusalem until they receive the power needed to do the job. Jesus assigned them to be sent for to be his witnesses. To these, the apostles, Jesus presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs. As recorded in the Gospel of Luke, the disciples lost faith in Jesus after he was crucified. He did not fulfill their expectations of what the Messiah would be and do. Now Jesus is reestablishing their faith after his suffering to bear the sins of the world upon the cross. Some of these convincing proofs were the empty tomb and the angels announcing Jesus' resurrection. That's Luke chapter 24, verses 2 through 12. As well as Jesus' physical body restored to life. Luke chapter 24, verse 39. Jesus also opened the scriptures to demonstrate that they spoke of him. That's Luke chapter 24, verses 44 and 45 as he did to the disciples on the road to Emmaus, Luke chapter 24, verses 25 and 27. Jesus' hands and feet were still scarred from his crucifixion. He was not merely a spirit or ghost, 
but the same man now resurrected, resurrected from death into an eternal spiritual body. Jesus lived among his disciples for 40 days in a resurrected physical body, eating food and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. Jesus spoke concerning the good news, the gospel of the kingdom of God during his entire ministry. However, the disciples did not really understand much of what Jesus taught, likely because they had the wrong mental model about the kingdom. This is why Luke recalls that Jesus spent much of the 40 days teaching them a new way to see scripture. The Apostle Paul recalls that the, that the risen Jesus appeared to 500 people in one situation, many who of whom were still alive at his writing. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 6. 500 witnesses is a significant number of people who would have firsthand knowledge to confirm that Jesus was raised from the dead. After Jesus spent 40 days with his followers teaching them concerning the kingdom of God, he then prepared to go back to heaven. Luke writes that gathering them together, Jesus commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised. Jesus was referring to the promise of power and a helper. This promise would be fulfilled through the descent and, in, and indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Jerusalem, the capital of Israel, was where Christ was arrested, tried, and crucified. Many Jews were there to celebrate Passover when this happened. But by this point in Acts chapter 1, 40 days after Jesus' resurrection, many Jews had returned to their home away from Jerusalem, but they would soon come back to the capital city to celebrate another feast, Pentecost, which takes place 50 days after the Passover. Jerusalem was the location where the disciples were to wait. What they waited for was what the Father had promised. Jesus reminds them of this promise, which he said, you heard of from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. To be baptized simply means to be immersed. John the baptizer immersed people in literal water as a sign to show that they had repented of sin and that they were choosing to identify with God in his kingdom and with the Messiah. This was symbolic and an important public way for people to show that they were choosing to follow Jesus as Messiah, that they repent of their sins and are prepared for God's kingdom. But Jesus is now telling his disciples, I'm going to immerse you in myself. I'm going to immerse you in the Holy Spirit and I'm going to transform your life. This now takes place when anyone believes in Jesus. Jesus spoke this well, this this new age of the Holy Spirit will be inaugurated at the Pentecost. Jesus spoke many times about the Holy Spirit and his purpose. He calls the Holy Spirit the helper. <coughs> this makes clear that the indwelling Holy Spirit is a greater asset to believers than having Jesus' physical presence on earth. The Holy Spirit is also called the Spirit of Truth. But when the Spirit of Truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will disclose to you what is to come. That's John chapter 16, verse 13. The Spirit will provide in knowing the truth and also in giving courage to the disciples who had incredibly difficult lives ahead of them. Since Christ was physically leaving earth, a spiritual helper would be sent to minister to, minister to and through believers. This helper, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, is the third person of the triune God. God the Father has sent God the Son to save the world. Now God the Son was returning to God the Father, and they were sending God the Spirit to teach and to speak through <coughs> believers in Jesus.
Jesus is preparing to return to heaven and has just told the disciples that they were to stay in Jerusalem to await the Holy Spirit, whom God would send to them to help them. But it was unclear to the disciples that Jesus was about to leave earth. He was crucified 40 days before and was resurrected three days later. And their understanding, they had already lost him, and now he had returned. They now understood that the scriptures required that Jesus be crucified and raised again, because Jesus had taught them this from the scriptures while te teaching them over 40 days' time. But the disciples still anticipated that Jesus would establish a physical kingdom in Israel with himself as the king, as was prophesied in the Old Testament. Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. They reasonably expect the victorious Jesus, who has stated that all authority was granted to him to rule from Jerusalem and crush the Roman Empire, establishing a forever kingdom. The disciples have tremendous passion to see Israel restored. They gave their lives to their cause. A constant theme of Christ's teachings was about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, about who would enter into it and who would inherit it and who would not be allowed entry. Now that Jesus died and resurrected in obedience to the Father, he has inherited authority over the earth. The disciples rather, un rather understandably think that the next step is for the kingdom of heaven to be physically brought to earth. So when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom to Israel? Jesus' reply is that it is not for you to know times or epochs which the Father has fixed by his own authority. Jesus re redirects their zeal, spreading the spirit. Their, 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 excuse me. Jesus redirects their zeal to spread the spiritual kingdom throughout the entire earth. He merely clarifies that it was not for the disciples to know when that would occur. Their business was to be his witnesses in all the earth. One day, Jesus will restore his kingdom to Israel. He has inherited the entire earth in reward for faithful obedience. And he will reestablish the throne of David in Israel. Second Samuel chapter 7 verse 13. But establishing it is not part of God's program just now. Jesus' reply makes it clear that there will be a time when he will restore the kingdom to Israel. However, Jesus says explicitly, explicitly, explicitly that it is not for the disciples to know when. A few days before he was betrayed and crucified, Jesus was with his disciples on the Mount of Olives, the same co-location as here in Acts 1, just before his accession. Some of the disciples asked him, tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign when all things are going to be fulfilled? That's Mark chapter 13, verse 4. Jesus lists many signs that will indicate the coming in times, but he is very clear that we cannot know when they will happen. But of that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the son, but the father alone. That's Mark chapter 13, verse 22. In that dialogue, he also expressly states that the gospel must first be preached to all the nations, Mark chapter 13, verse 10. He will repeat this point to them now, giving them what they must focus on rather than the physical restoration of the kingdom and the end times. Jesus turns the subject back to what the disciples need to prepare for, that they will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon them. The Holy Spirit will empower them to preach the gospel about Jesus Christ tells them, you shall be my witnesses to preach the gospel about Jesus. Christ tells them, you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest parts of the earth. 
This is a similar command to the verses known as the Great Commission. These commands summarize the job given to all believers in Jesus until he returns. It continues to this day. Christ was not yet establishing his kingdom physically on earth. That was only for God the Father to decide by his own authority. Jesus' kingdom was still not of this world. The work of the disciples was to fill that spiritual kingdom with spiritual citizens. The disciples were to be Jesus' witnesses in Jerusalem to the Jewish people, in Samaria to those who were half Jewish and half Gentile, and all in, Ju in all Judah, the full population of the Jewish people, and even to the remotest part of the earth to all peoples everywhere. All Jews, all Gentiles, all peoples as far as the remotest part of the earth were to hear from Christ's witnesses what he had taught, how he had died, and that he had resurrected to free humankind from sin and to give them an everlasting relationship with God. Our believers have the job of being a martyr in the sense of living their lives sacrificially, laying down their lives in service to Jesus. Some will lose their lives physically, all to lose their lives spiritually to die that they might be that they might live. As Jesus said, for whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. That's Matthew chapter 16, verse 25. By appointing his followers as witnesses, Jesus is commanding them to lose their lives for the sake of his kingdom. At the point of Christ's ascension from heaven, Christianity, which at the time was initially called the way, is basically a Jewish sect and maybe a few hundred people. By the end of Acts, within a matter of a few decades, Christianity is a vast improvement. Well, Christianity is a vast movement sweep, sweeping across the Roman Empire. People from all walks of life, Jews and Gentiles alike, become a part of it through faith. This took place because the apostles heard Jesus' command and followed it. God's plan to restore the earth is being executed through his people, walking in faith, obeying his commands. Jesus, Jesus has just told the disciples to wait in Jerusalem for the arrival of the Holy Spirit. After that, they are to be his witnesses all over the world. So after he had said these things, he was lifted up while they were looking on, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Luke mentioned this event at the end of his gospel, but significantly expands upon the event here in Acts. Jesus was lifted up, meaning he ascended into the sky. The lifting up of someone into heaven has occurred at least once before when Elijah went into heaven in a whirlwind, whirlwind as 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 11. It likely also occurred with Enoch, Genesis chapter 5, verse 24. However, this is the first lifting up of someone who has been resurrected with a new spiritual body. There will also be a future lifting up into heaven of the two witnesses in Revelation after they are resurrected. At a point in the future, there will be a great lifting up of living believers. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 and 52, and 1 Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. Finally, the disciples have seen many incredible, miraculous sights throughout their time with Jesus. The healing of diseases, the multiplication of food, control over weather, demons cast out, Christ transfigured, resurrections from death. Still, they never stopped being amazed by such acts from God. They still gazed intently into the sky while Jesus was going. Not only was this an awesome sight to see, it was probably sad. He was gone. Perhaps they thought he could shortly return. Or perhaps they thought Moses or Elijah might descend as had occurred at the Mount of Transfiguration. 
The disciples had followed him for three years, giving up their jobs and family life to learn from him and do what he asked. They had mourned over his death and rejoiced over his resurrection. They did not expect him to go away, though he had warned them of it many times. And now the Son of God was gone from the earth. He had returned to heaven in his resurrected state to sit down at the right hand of God as a reward for his faithfulness. But the disciples remained on earth and might have felt alone. So God pushed them toward action, away from the dwelling of the departure of Christ. As they were gazing intently into the sky while Jesus disappeared into a cloud out of their sight, God's messengers speak to them. Luke writes, Behold, to draw our attention to what happens next. The disciples saw the two men in white clothing stood beside them. In the Bible, men who appear from nowhere and wear white or shining clothing are typically angels. And jealous means messenger in Greek. They asked the disciples, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. The message seems to be, don't just stand there gawking, get to work. So when Jesus returns, he will find you faithful and carrying out his commands. One of the disciples, John, would eventually have a vision of Christ's return. Jesus will indeed return among the clouds just the same way the disciples Watch them go into heaven. That's Revelations chapter 1, verse 7, verses 19 through 11. No, what's that? Chapter 19, verses 11 through 16. Amen. All right. That's all I have. Amen. That was, a, that was another, another good lesson, Brother Vergas. I need to change your name from Pitch Center to a designated hero. Hey, yes, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Whenever somebody can't do it or didn't ask to do it, you do it, man. You know, but, but in your lesson day, it's always good to have a, an eyewitness to, to anything, you know, to get people to, you know, to believe what you're saying, you know. Um, and, and, and it's also good because you have more than one eyewitness. He had the 12 disciples, uh, he had Thomas, stuck his hand in the side. And, and he had the ladies that at the tomb. He had he had the soldiers that put him in the tomb, and he had the five hundred. You know, after after he had res resurrection, and so it's always good to have you know our witnesses. But you know, but Jesus kind of reminded them, you know, that he had already spoken to them about everything that was going to happen, how he was going to suffer, you know, and and really they couldn't under, they couldn't really. Uh, believe that you know that he was just gonna he was gonna really suffer you know and die and everything and be resurrected even though he told him all that and he backed it up with scripture you know he, he told him how exactly everything was gonna happen I mean, but he also told him that this was a plan this wasn't something that you know just made up this is god's plan right from the beginning but his major concern was to you know prepare the disciples for the challenge of a world evangelism you know, and I think about that, you know, you know, we're told to go out and evangelize everybody. You know, and that's hard to evangelize somebody that's been brought up to believe one thing, you know. And then you have to tell them about Jesus Christ and you know how you know how he died and was resurrected and everything, but getting them to that that's a challenge. You know, he's telling us to go out and tell the world. I mean go out and tell Muslim, India, Buddha. Everybody, you know, but it was it was a, it was a message to go out and tell all nations, not just not the not just the Jews in Jerusalem, you know, not not in Samaria, but just but go everywhere. But they also promised that when they did go out, you know, that they wouldn't be alone, you know. And I kind of thought about that for a minute, and I said, you know, it'd be like uh, me sending my granddaughter to the store and don't give her no money, to go to the store, you know. <laughs> She wouldn't have she wouldn't have no help, you know. So but you know, when we go out and if we go out without the Holy Spirit, we're not gonna be successful. We have to go out, you know, with the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. And but that was a great lesson, Brother Verse. Appreciate it. Yes, sir.
Yes, sir, brother, brother, brother Verdes. I concur. Designated hitter. Yeah. You really stirred the pot tonight. You were all over the Bible yeah. tonight. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, you know, I, I, I was, I kind of looked at the commentary on uh, on our Acts 1-3. Uh, and so it said, uh, it kind of, in my commentary tonight, verse by verse, commentary.com on the Bible exposition commentary, it kind of broke down uh, Acts 1-3. And it says, to whom to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering. And now we associate his suffering with his crucifixion. And it says, by many fallible. When he said fallible, we mean convincing and decisive proofs. Okay, he had witnesses, but he also he also uh, performed. Uh, he also did a lot of showed them a lot of things too. And so what happened was it says the many infallible proofs are the events that happened after Jesus' resurrection covering his first, covering the 40 days. 1 John 1 1. And it says, 1 John 1, it says, uh that that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes. You mentioned by witnesses which we have looked upon in our hands have been touched of the word of life for the life appeared and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the father and appeared unto us so what he's saying was John opens his first letter to the church is similar to the way he began his gospel emphasizing that the eternal word of life Jesus Christ came into the world as a human in order to rescue us from sin and restore our fellowship with God when John says we he is including himself with the other disciples as eyewitnesses as you mentioned to Jesus' life John had lived and traveled with Jesus having personal physical contact with him over several years he knew beyond any doubt that Jesus brings light and life. Now, when he said infallible proofs, it says that this is the only time the word proof occurs in the New Testament in this verse. Only time you'll see it. The word for proofs is a technical term from logic carrying the idea of demonstrative evidence. Infallible proofs show demonstrable evidence rather than provided by witnesses. The apostles who would never have risked their lives for a dead Christ, they needed to know for sure that he was raised from the dead. The apostles became convinced without question that he rose physically from the dead. And when it says being seen by them during 40 days, what the commentary says is that the Lord showed himself many times during the post-resurrection period and before the ascension. The reality of their visual evidence of his resurrection by his personal post-resurrection appearances was the confirmation of their faith. 1 Corinthians 15, 3, 8. 3 through 8. I'm not going to read it, but you can you can find that. His personal, his personal post-resurrection appearances was the, was the confirmation of their faith, First Chronicles 15, verses 3 through 8. And it says, the third part, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, it says, Jesus was the rejected king. Israel said, we will not have this man reign over us. They had no king but Caesar. Jesus spoke of the kingdom of God, and that is, he turned their thinking to the Great Commission. Where, we, where he charged his people to take the gospel to every creature. Luke 24, 45 to 47. You mentioned Luke 45, 47. I believe you said 45 to 49. What he said was, uh, he said, then, then uh, opened he their understanding that they might understand the scripture. And, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it is, thus it is behooved 
Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins to be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And when we say universal kingdom, I wonder what they were talking about. And what he did, Beecham, uh, the commentary written by Beecham, he kind of he kind of defined what universal freedom was. Universal freedom was eternal kingdom of God, as God's macro cos cosmic rule through His exclusive sovereign dom dominion over all creation, a rule without pause or end. And I found that on the faithequipment.org, the universal kingdom of God. And they talk, and he always talk, he also talk about the, the, the not the millennial kingdom. I looked on the Wikipedia.org for millennial kingdom for the definition of that, and it says that was the belief claims that human history will continue for six thousand years, and then will enjoy Sabbath for one thousand years. Thus, all of human history will have a total of seven thousand years prior to the new creation. And that was the difference between universal kingdom, not the millennial kingdom. Now, the, the, the application of this whole commentary was the resurrection of Christ and his surrounding events is the foundation of Christianity. The post-resurrection occurrences of Christ tested the validity of his resurrection. Christianity, Christianity bases its case on facts, truth, and evidence. The apostles rested that case on what they saw in evidence. In 1 John 1, 1, I read that. Peter made it very clear that the apostles did not base their evidence on myth. That's in 2 Peter 1, 16. They knew the Lord before and after his crucifixion and resurrection. Thomas declared that he would not believe unless he saw the proof himself. After seeing the proof, he declared, my Lord and my God, John 20, 28. So you're right. There was witnesses, and there was also proof. Uh, I believe uh, Dick Washington mentioned about the people that saw him uh, during those during the time of those forty days. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, uh, they saw him at during the first during the first uh, uh, the day of his resurrection took place. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary saw him in Matthew twenty eight one through nine. Uh, the two disciples. On their way to Emmaus, they, they saw him, Luke 24, 15. Uh, the third one was Simon Peter, uh, Luke 24, 33 and 34. And the fourth was uh, the, ten, the ten apostles uh, saw him. Thomas was absent. That's in 24, 36. Thomas was absent. However, Thomas, he was the, uh, he was with he was with the eleven disciples when uh, when they saw him again, and that's in John twenty twenty six. And like you said, he appeared to several different different persons at different times. He was eating and drinking with them. He was he meeting his meeting with them in Galilee according to his own appointment. He, he subjected his body to be touched and handled by them. He instructed them in the nature and doctrines of his kingdom. And like uh, Deacon Washington said, he appeared to upwards of 500 persons at once. That's in Corinthians 1, 15, 6. And continue these public manifestations of himself for 40 days. We have the proofs that are infallible. It means they are true. And uh, <clears throat> to, to whom he showed himself alive by many infallible proofs. That's in uh, that's in uh, 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 goodtube.com forward slash Bible, forward slash Acts 1-3. It says, to whom he showed himself alive by many infallible proofs, by many proofs of such a nature and connected with such circumstances as to render them indutable, indutable, indubitable, indubitable. Yeah. What, we mean by, what we mean by indubitable means it's, it's uh it's too too evident to be doubted, too much evidence to be doubted, impossible to doubt, unquestionable. But this is the import this is the import of the Greek word. The proofs was such was all those proofs that I just mentioned to you. So he was there, there was a, there was the proofs that he was there, the witnesses were there, 
And so I just go to show you that um, as we talked about the witnesses and we talked about this verse tonight, it showed that, uh, that you, the eternal kingdom is with God and everything that he says and done after the resurrection and he came back, it is true and it is true until this day. And we believe that to this day as believers. So great lesson tonight. Appreciate it, uh, a designated hitter. Uh, great lesson tonight. Appreciate it. D.H., Brother D.H., uh, Brothers, you did a great job with this lesson, man. You covered a lot of material. Amen. Uh, and all, all I mean, you, you are, I don't know how you do it when you're a designated hitter, you know, to come up with as much as you came up with. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if, I don't know if we, we remember uh, this passage, Luke 24, 44 through 49. We spent the last three weeks preaching on that, yeah. you know, uh, that's something that I, I looked at that passage. I was like, man, I know we ought to be familiar with that passage. You know, evangelism still required. <laughs> and so, so uh, but no, you did a great job with that, man. I like I like the way you did, uh, you know, word study or <coughs> etymology, you know, with the Greek words and what they meant. I like the way you brought out what uh, Theophilus' names meant, uh, friend of God. Uh, and then I like the way you mentioned back then. You know, they didn't have the uh, they have they didn't have a New Testament, so everything about Jesus was basically oral tradition. Uh, and then later on, it became written. You know, after they started writing, sometime after he had had after he had uh, went to you know went back to to the Father. But uh, you you broke broke that down real well. And uh, I mean, it was just so much that you said. I couldn't write it all, man. I had I just had a little sheet of paper. I tried to cover every corner of it. But uh you you put out some gems tonight, you know. I, yeah. I like the way you traced it all the way from uh Luke and then the gospel of Luke and then how it connects to uh Acts. Uh remember we talked about uh the gospel of Luke and the book of Acts was really originally one book. Uh but they the the uh the the writers of the Bible, the those who uh, put the, the, you know, the catalyze the Bible, they put John in the middle of that to break it up. But if you read the first part, first chapter and uh, Luke in the first chapter and, and uh, Acts, uh, the first four verses, both of them are pretty much the same because they're addressing Theophilus. And, you know, basically a person who is really seeking the truth. And uh, Luke takes the time to lay it out Word, word step by step of who Jesus was, but uh, yeah, man, you did a good job with that, man. I, I just, you know, like I say, I, I had so much to write on and so much to write with. You talked about uh, that list, I think it was Deacon Washington talking about, you know, what if he sent his granddaughter to the store uh, with a list, and it brought me back to memory my father's mother, uh, my grandmother, uh, she would send me to the store with a list uh, to what, what she wanted. She wanted some Chesterfield King cigarettes. Uh, she wanted some candy and she wanted uh, some, 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 I think it was some sardines or something. Anyway, I, I take the list down to the store, but she didn't send no money with me. You know, she, she sent me down to the store and I went down to the store and picked up everything she wanted, gave it to Mr. Thomas. Mr. Thomas looked at it and he wrote on a piece of cardboard how much it was. And so uh, <laughs> I guess when she got a little check, you know, she she go down there and take care, send me back down there with the money to take care of him. So, yeah, that, it kind of took me back down on 14th Street, man, 14 Chestnut, man. Uh, I really appreciate that, Deacon Washington. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> we, 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 we did the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I was, you know, little, he had a little old bitty piece of cardboard tack, tacked on the wall. He'd write a name and <laughs> that on the wall. <laughs> so, yeah. so she got a little painting. Mm. You know, she she settled up, and I had to go back down there. But, yeah, man, our witnesses are very important. And that's what the whole deal about, you know, we live in a time now where <clears throat> we got brothers that don't want to be preachers. Well, they want to be preachers, but they don't want to be reverend. You know, they want to be bishop, so-and-so, and, -so, and they want to be apostles, so and so. And so, you know, you said it right. You know, the apostles were the ones <coughs> who are witnesses of Jesus' resurrection. So if you got a brother running around here talking about he's an apostle, 
then uh, he's over 2,000 years old. <laughs> so, 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 so I don't know how that look. You know, I don't want to see how that look, you know, 2,000 year old man. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, all this is, you know, the thing that I'm going to say this, I'm going to give these brothers another chance, a chance to say what they need to say because you had said so much, I can't. But anyway, what, 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 what I see going on now in Christendom, in church, you know, I ask often ask the Lord, Lord, what what do you want me to preach? You know, what is it that you need the church to hear? I mean, in the midst of all this heresy, in the midst <clears> of all this this stuff that's going on, you know, in in the church, you know, and as far as these messages, what 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 needs to be preached? And his answer, the answer comes back to me: go back to the two things that I commanded the church to do. Go back to the basics. Go back to evangelism. Go back to discipleship. That's all I left the church to do is those two things. And so that's basically what, what God is showing us tonight, even tonight. You know, we we have to go and share this message. This message is too valuable for us to not share. And I know we all have different personalities. I know we all have different ways of doing it. But it's just a natural conversation about something that's very eternal, you know. Uh, talking about people, what is your spiritual condition? You know, what happens? What do you think happens when you die? And just start there. And they, I don't know, it, or that's when you, you know, you try to share with them, hey, this is what Jesus said, you know? So we we, we, we just have to continue to share that message in our inner circle and then, you know, keep spreading it out a little bit, you know, here and there. But that's evangelism is so important. You know, we are, we're not our witnesses per se, but we are witnesses of his grace. We are witnesses of his, you know, his mercy. We are witnesses of his forgiveness. And so all I can tell us, brothers, let's just keep praying, you know, and just keep asking God to show us and give us opportunities where we can share this message. Because this this is the greatest message on earth, you know, and we have this time to do it. And um, it's not about us, you know, it's all about him. That's why we talked about on Sunday. He gave them him. He gave just like he gave them him. He gave us, he gave us, he gave us the same thing he gave them, his promise and his presence. And all we need to do is just go out there and keep talking. But verse, you did a great job, man. Not only can you sing, bro, but you can preach. Yeah. <laughs> I told him that, Pastor. I told him that earlier, Pastor. Yeah, uh -oh. man. I, I'm standing up there. I heard a voice and I looked down the line. I didn't know where that voice was coming from. I looked at it. <laughs> Because Brother Roosevelt was hiding them. I couldn't see it around Brother Roosevelt. I had to duck out and say, it's murders. <laughs> but good job, man. Keep up the great Thank work. Y'all you brothers, brothers, need to start a school of theology, man, because y'all be digging real oh, no. deep. What? Real deep. Y'all be digging deep, man. That's good. That, that means you put time in it, man. So I appreciate that. God bless you. Thank you. You know, Pastor, I didn't really think about it. But out of those two, the two scriptures that we had, I'm glad <laughs> I did choose Acts for some reason. I guess God would let me know now. You don't want to come behind with prophecy preaching <laughs> and try to give a listen. <laughs> I've been feeling like Brother Roosevelt. <laughs> hey, hey, I always try to get before the pastor, uh, Hayes, Brother Todd, Mr. Henderson. Digga Washington, I try to get this, but Digga Washington, he jumps on the first every time. He's the first one on. And then Brother Holmes, Digga Holmes, would, would, would pass the floor on to me, which gave me a gave me a break. Man, all you brothers can do it, man. Y'all do a great job with study. I really appreciate that. Mm. Thank you. Hey, very is. Way to go, bro. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Way to grow, you know. Um, you had you you did load us up again, man. You know, for me, I learned that sometimes a lot, a lot. I need I need to be able to digest some of these pieces. You know, uh, you you give me so much, man. My jaws just be full when I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to chew and try to get out something done. And, and then some will, some will catch me in some of what you're saying, and I and I get and then I kind of. Uh, drift away. I drifted away when 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 one of those uh uh you were reciting somebody and, and he referred to Jesus's movement. 
And that stopped me. You, you know, I kind of lost myself because of that word movement. You know, and I was trying to process process that in my mind. You, you know, um, when you think about the word itself, you know, it has some sort of physical um, propulsion of your body or something of that nature. Then, of course, there are these things that they describe in movements, maybe even the civil rights and large groups of people um, uh, uh, in a in a similar, a same direction, trying to get <clears> to <throat> where they were, where they are, to another place. You know, things like that. So, I'm sitting up there thinking about Jesus and Jesus having a movement. But I I needed a bigger word than movement. I needed some something else. I, I, you know, not to knock what they got wrote and what you you know what you're talking about. That's but I didn't I didn't that's so human. <laughs> you know? <laughs> that, that that is so human that that I struggled even with that. I don't have anything to replace that. I just let you know that I I got I I drifted away, which happened <laughs> sometimes, man. And, I, and then I gotta bring myself back and get back into it. Cause you know you were you were giving us so many pieces, but one of the things that I think that is so uh important and I and I like I like the uh the way Luke starts out his writing actually you know and he talks about the fact that he he he's done the research he's followed up and he wanted to record things so that accurately you know so that we would <clears throat> so that we uh, you know would have the the actual accounting you know and so I appreciate that you know in his writing and what he put in there and then if we, if we notice. He had things in his gospel that that are not in others, you know. So, and I keep thinking about things like that and how exact he was working to be, you know, in in what he was writing. And then we get to this this portion of our our, our you know the portion where we actually had some study, you know, and that kind of went over into uh, uh into into Acts itself, you you know. So all, all of that for me to say is is that um um. I think it is so important for us to be able to recant and speak to these things with that kind of accuracy. Things meaning uh, the life of Jesus Christ, <clears throat> you know, and, and 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 while we may not have all of the pieces, Pastor made it pretty clear. There are only a couple of things we really need to remember, right, and deal with, you know, but we also, uh, I think, want to be able to to give an accounting to other people some of the things that about Jesus you know so after the resurrection Jesus walked around for 40 days you know and he encountered a whole lot of people <clears throat> uh, who was it is that in uh, acts no that may have been in Luke of Mark talked about how many people 500 people you know that 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 saw him you, you know, and so you think about that, and I mean, that, I, you know, and understanding that a whole lot of that was so people could see him, you know, so they would be eyewitnesses, you know, but the idea was for them to be able to continue to carry that message. I saw him. You can say, I saw him yesterday. He spoke to us, you know, and so convincing. Now, who going to tell these people they did not see Jesus? That he's dead. He wasn't. Who gonna tell him that? You know, I'm sure they were on fire with what it is that they saw and just could not wait to get it out there. So yeah, wasn't no telephone, no social media, none of that kind of stuff. But it got out there. And you know, when you think about that, that had to be a divine circumstance in and of itself. That even this day and age, so many people in this world, just as he commanded. You know, go everywhere. You know, everywhere. And then when he's talking about remote places, he's talking about over here. You know, because back in 60, 65 AD, you know, we wasn't, wasn't much going on over here. White folk had, you know, polluted everything, messed nothing up. You know, they, they in fact hadn't made it. You know, so that the, the reality is, is that this was one of those places. And 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 I think about that. I say this is he's exactly saying now. Y'all remember that you got to get over there in the United States of America and help these people out. Well, what did they do? They come. So many of them come and corrupted and and changed our uh, what it is that 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 Jesus's life meant. 
you know, and even today we still hear that, you know, we hear these cross sections and, and things that are dichotomous, like a white nationalist, a white Christian nationalist, you know, and their beliefs, you know, that in and of itself is blasphemy for as far as I'm concerned, you know, because they have taken that upon themselves. And, and, and you know, throughout history, you can see where they work to co-op so much so. Again, I'm not gonna get into the to the to the to the to the black Hebrews and the lost tribes and all that stuff, you, you know, because they, you know, they get black folk all some black folk is <laughs> a little stirred up. You know, because they think they be the lost tribe. They be the Hebrews, you, you know, the lost treat people, the lost tribe, you know. And, and, and even if they studied what all of those words meant, they might not want to accept that. You know, that, that the, even the meaning of some of the aspects of Hebrew was nomads. They had no real designations, you know. <laughs> you go back and do, you talk about studying the words and what they mean. Well, some folks just pick up all of that stuff because they did not want to believe a lot of what they thought was white folks teachings, you know? So for us, we have to be accurate witnesses. You know, we can't allow folks to, to, to uh, if you will, bastardize uh, 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 the, the, the things that we know better than. And I think it's just so important for us to, while we may not be loaded up with a whole lot of stuff and not able to remember all those scriptures, there are some very basic things that we have learned and we can talk to people about and they still struggle with. And here is one, the greatest uh, event on earth was the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then the other part of that is that we have to realize <clears throat> that even though we have not seen him, and this is what it was, we won't see, we don't see him till the end. We haven't seen him, but we still have to represent ourselves as witnesses. Because that's what he's given us the power to do. Pa Pastor even got, uh, uh, informed us that we got some of the same, same stuff loaded in us. You know, because he did that. Y'all got the power and authority. But you don't use it. Why? Because we want to believe something else. You know, you got people running around believing the Big Bang Theory. Man, it's hard for me to get my head wrapped around. You know? Then blew up something out there and resulted into this perfect place <clears throat> to live in. How can that be? How can that be? When is the last time? That when will be the next time? They'll even go so far as they, it, it has already happened. They just go on and on with their explanations and telling you stuff. Anything other than what I believe is the true accounting. It wouldn't be no explosion if it wasn't God. Well, you know, they the who it, it wouldn't be any chemistry. You know, none of you heard y'all heard me say that before. He is science. You know, people running around and trying to prove this or disprove that. You know, one of the greatest mechanisms that we still can't work out is the human body. You know, we ain't gonna be able to reproduce one. You might be able to grow one from the embryos and all of that kind of stuff that they want to do and catch the little, you know, little sperm and try to hook them up, you know, but they can do all that stuff, you know. But in reality, you know, to 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 have had to have such a perfect body, to have such a perfect planet, to be in a place where uh, air, the one thing, one of the things that we need to survive is air. Where does it come from? Where does it go? I mean, and so we have all of these other things that we can't have explanation about that make something up. We have the, our belief system in Jesus Christ, and we are the witnesses for him. And I think it is just so important for us to continue to, to, to witness. Um, and, and so much information that you gave us today, but I couldn't write all of that down, and then I got <laughs> distracted, and I had to get myself back on course. You, you know, but that, I just have to say that happens to me. Some, you know, I am compelled to, to process some things that come into my mind because I have to, it hits me like, what do I think about Jesus' movement? Uh, you know, I just can't, I still can't wrap it around my head to see his <laughs> movement because that's too human. It was much yeah. bigger than that. Much well, bigger than that. So if I ever come up with a word rather than the movement, you God's know, player. some of y'all got a word. Go ahead. God's plan. What it was. That, 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 that works. 
what it said was at the time Jesus ascended into heaven, Christianity at the time was it wasn't Christianity, it was called the way. And it was basically just a, you know, a few three hundred people. And it said it was it was Christianity was just a vast movement. It no, not wasn't Jesus it was just, <clears throat> because it wasn't called Christianity. It was believers in a certain way. Uh, Pastor, you, you probably I know you've told us before when we actually started using the term Christians to identify believers. Yeah, the way is in Acts. Uh, I think it's around Acts chapter uh, <clears throat> when they were identified as the way. I, I want to say it had to have been around Acts, somewhere in Acts 8, because it was the first church in Jerusalem that uh, they was identified as the way. I'm not sure when uh, we were first called Christians. I don't even think a uh, Christian is in the is in the Bible. Um, let me take a look right quick. But to Deacon Hayes, to your to your uh, you know to your thought about the human body, man. While you just while you was talking about, it, we can't figure it out. Mm -hmm. I just googled uh, how many miles are are the human are are, are the veins in a human being. And they say they said as by adulthood, every human being has at least sixty thousand miles of blood vessels, <laughs> which means you can go around the world twice. <laughs> <laughs> all, all that wrapped up in I, I, in, in this body. <laughs> it, it is amazing. It is <laughs> it, I, absolutely. <laughs> well, 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 why I got that in there? You know, I like the way. All right, I, yeah. I, could, I could deal with the way a whole lot better than movement. Movement, <laughs> he, showing us the way. I, I, I love that. Yeah, but a movement, man. I'm I'm struggling with that. You know, I I, I you know I come up through the sixties. I know about hippies and all that other stuff, man. Yeah, all the movements that we had back there. We had a movement for everything. <laughs> we gonna start a movement, or we gonna start a revolution? <laughs> well, no, nah, that that just ain't working, man. The way. As simple as that is, that that resonates with me. Yeah, yeah. and I, I heard a guy the other day say the easy way to shut down a scientist when they start talking about creation and all big bang <laughs> and all that is just remind them it is a known fact in in science, energy can't create energy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Those four words right there, and they have no answer for that because this is true: energy can't create energy. So you can't have a big bang because energy <laughs> can't create energy. So, somebody had to create energy. Come on. Come on. They're right about one thing, though. It did happen all at once. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Come on. Oh, said, Let there be one light. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. How about that? It wasn't no two molecules buffing together. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, the word is Acts, Acts 11 26 says uh, the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Okay. So that's Acts 11 26. Okay, yeah. Acts 11 26. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. For the first reference to Christians, 11 26. Yeah. They were first called Christians. <clears throat> It said originally the church called themselves the way. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. But later they became they began to refer to themselves as Christian. Yep. Eleven twenty six. Mm -hmm. Acts. Right. The way became a title for followers of Jesus. The name of their belief before the term Christian was used. <clears throat> hey. It's referenced three times in the Bible, Christian. Yeah. Acts 26 and 28. I'm like you, Deacon Hayes. I like the way. <laughs> I like the way. Yeah. I like the way. Well, Thank you. From, I got it. Then, uh, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Yeah. yeah John 14, yeah, 6. Yeah. That is. We don't, I we am don't the way. need no movement. 
hey, hey, and he is the only way. He's the only way. <laughs> he, he's the only Moving way. Moving implies <laughs> different directions. <laughs> yes, sir. He's the only Make way. No he's, the only way. Tell you, he's the only way. Hey, man. Well, thank you, brother. Burns. This is all I got, man. I'm glad y'all cleared that up for me. I'm about to toss to this turning tonight, trying to get to that. They never found my way. Uh, I didn't mean to see you down them rabbit holes. Thank you, Carl. Brother Designated Hitter. Um, I, you know, I, I, I agree with the uh, rest of the gentlemen. Um, we also have a a great star singer amongst us as well. So yeah, that's, right. Um, that's right. We got a we got a crooner <clears throat> uh, that's arrived. Um, you know, just like Freddie Jackson. So um, <laughs> you, you just you just blessed us. You just blessed us Sunday. So um, great great lesson. Great lesson. I you know I like I like this this title eyewitnesses of Jesus's ministry eyewitnesses. Yeah. Um, and that 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 brought me to mind that that even when I look at the title eyewitnesses, I thought about transforming eyewitnesses to the letter I and witness. Um, I mean that's 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 us. That's us. We are I and we are witnesses, Amen. and we are placed on this earth to do just that. Um, to, to be the eyewitnesses for, for, for Jesus. I mean, he's, he's told us that's what we, that's what we are about. Um, and that's, that's what he expects us to do. Um, you mentioned that, that Luke uses eyewitnesses, testimonies of people who were around uh, and, and people who were able to, to, to even validate uh, what other people may have talked about, who may have, have seen and heard some of the same, same stories. Um, you know, when I was talking about eye, eyewitnesses, you know, I see ourselves as spiritual witnesses. When I think about, you know, the, the disciples who walked amongst and walked with Jesus back then, they got to see and got to hear and, and, and got to be a part of all those things that Jesus was, was doing. Well, we weren't, we weren't back there then, but we also believe uh, because we are believers. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we we can we can provide uh, uh, and act as a spiritual witness uh, to what Jesus is about, what God has 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 done for us. Uh, we're, we're spiritual witnesses. Um, we we've seen we've seen God in our in our mind because He's part of our spirits. Mm -hmm. um, so we can we can be vouchers. We can be that, that believers, um, and then we can. We can tell our 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 stories. We can tell our events, um, and we can do it in such a way where people can believe that what we are telling them is is the truth. Um, you know, t testimonies are are living expressions uh, of a person's experience and the impact and the impact of that that experience. You know, when we think about you know people who who come before the church and they kind of share what's happened with them. And they 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 they, share, they provide their testimony, and they do it in such a way to where we feel we can feel we can empathize mm -hmm. with what they are telling us, um, and 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 that impact is something that we can we can kind of kind of wrap our minds around, and we we and we believe that they have gone through that experience, and it helps us to realize too uh, that what they're what they're sharing with us is is the truth, and and they are believers as well. Uh, you you mentioned that 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 acts with acts. You know, it 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 talks about Paul's persecution of the church, but his promotion of the church and its ministry. And again, I thought about us. While you know, we 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 were back there in in the world. We didn't persecute the church, but we ignored the church. Amen. We ignored it. We we just we just felt like we'll we'll get around to it sometime, maybe. Uh, we heard our folks talk about the church. We heard our folks talk about Jesus and the power that 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 Jesus had bestowed upon them and what what God had done for them. And so it 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 didn't it didn't it didn't uh, leave us. It was in the back of our minds. Um, it was in the back of our minds uh, because we had other stuff that we wanted to do at the time. 
Um, we 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 wanted to get out there as, as as my mother used to say. We wanted to get out there and be mannish. Uh, <laughs> uh, and and, and <laughs> so, but you know something happened. Something happened. Um, and and because we never figured out that foundation uh, that was that was laid laid before us. Uh, you said disciples did not understand what Jesus taught us, taught, what Jesus taught, because they had the wrong mental message that he presented. Again, I mean, that that, that sounds like us. Uh, we, we weren't ready un, until. Um, but, you know, when the scales of sin uh, fell from our eyes, um, you know, we then be, became the greatest spiritual witnesses there is on earth. Uh, but those scales had to flop away before we be, we began to see because uh, then we things was clear to us. Um, you also said that Jesus immersed himself, immersed us in His Spirit, and He transformed He transformed transformed us. There, 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 there's a program that that still comes on TV called the Transformers, and you got these big robotic giants and things like that that um, you know kind of walk upright. But 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 it's kind of interesting because when there's a need for them to do some things, then they can all of a sudden transform. They can change their bodies to, you know, if if they need a vehicle to go someplace, they can be a they can be a car, they can be a bus, they can be an airplane. Uh, they can transform themselves into something to where uh, it's needed, to where they're needed. Well, I think that's what happened with us. We have been transformed. Um, because we don't look like we used to look. We don't act like we used to act. We don't talk like we used to used to talk. Um, we've been transformed from way back then to where we are now, to where we really can, can and we are uh, eyewitnesses of, of what Jesus Christ has done for us. Um, we've really moved from hearing our folks talk about Jesus to where we're the ones we're the ones who are saying that we're going to go tell it. Yeah. We're going to go tell it everywhere we can. Uh, we've been transformed. Uh, you know, when I think about the role of an eyewitness, uh, you know, they talk about, you know, records of events. Uh, they talk about things that, that, that where they can share that's been truthful. Um, and they can be specific. Um, that they're one who believes and they, they kind, of, uh, kind of express emotions of that event. To the extent that where people can can feel it, um, but we become eyewitnesses in our testimony. We become eyewitnesses in our prayers. Um, you know the way we live becomes an becomes an eyewitness. The way we 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 care for each other, a white eyewitness. The way we talk, we just have to continue to to step forward and just tell the world uh, this 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 dying world, this crazy world that we live in. Uh, about a living savior because we know how this story is going to end yeah. and we're going to be the ones to stand before the kingdom and be able to be one of the greatest eyewitnesses with God and before Jesus to say that we love you God and we appreciate the blessings we appreciate uh, the grace and the mercy that's been shared upon us because of our being eyewitnesses uh, for the great for for God on high, great lesson, brother Bertie. Great lesson. Amen. Step away for a minute. Hey, uh, brother Hayes, you mentioned about drifting away. That was a song by Doby Gray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Drift away. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's right. Need you to unmute. Right. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, I like that eyewitness thing, man. I like I like the way you personalize that, man. That was very slick. Yes, sir. Brother uh, yes, sir. It's gonna be a that's a t-shirt in the making right there for the MVP ministry. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. We, we are our witnesses. Yeah. yeah. Our witnesses. Yeah. Next yeah. shirt we're gonna get. Amen. 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 Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. 
Yes, sir. It opens the door for ministry in that morning. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Amen. Where, 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 <laughs> Let me tell you about a risen savior. Somebody oh, yeah. save somebody like me. Yes, yeah. Yeah. And if you want to, he'll save somebody like me. Say, yeah. hey, brother, hey, brother, hey, we're gonna we're gonna wear that shirt, our witnesses. And then uh and then we're gonna all have our Dallas Cowboy hats on. No, no, no. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's gonna bring that's gonna bring another meaning though. <laughs> oh, Amen. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> that, that. <laughs> that open conversation up about, about the eyewitness. <laughs> and we all open the conversation. <laughs> well, amen. Uh, 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 as all the brothers along with Pastor said, I mean, he, he was Sunday. I think I, I met him before he got ready to say. And I told him, I said, it took me a while to remember it had, that song had been so long ago. If y'all remember, I used to do that scripture. And then he he mm -hmm. sung the song, but I watch how, how the Holy Spirit just took him. He jumped right in with that verse, and I mean he just went to sing. And and I'm telling, I'm 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 just proud to know that you're a part of this this man's group. Amen. And, Amen. And, 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 and you know, and then. A lie, as you know, we talk about uh, uh, this witness. Uh, something that comes to remind me about a lot of times is about a witness is, and I think we all know that. See, a witness is someone that has proof of something or someone, mm -hmm. and, and no one calls on a witness if you don't have no proof. And 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 and, and so the Lord kept reminding me how much proof. Do they really need? <laughs> how much proof do they need? I mean, how many times am I gonna <clears throat> from one storm after another storm? Man, how, how many times am I gonna show you that I'm a miracle worker? I mean, I, I mean how much more proof I, I I fed people in the wilderness? Mm. I mean, how many more times am I going to have to prove to you? That's what, when you talk about that infallible proof, that means that's proof that never changes. It, it can't change. It's documented proof that it did happen. And, and so when I was looking at this, because what shook me was, uh, we all, I said, uh, uh, know about Jesus' miracle working power. You know, all of us had the same experience Pastor talked about. And I love to call it the Damascus Road experience. All of us, I don't care, you you rub some, you you, you drink some, you kind of touch something. I heard Deacon Todd saying he got out there and want to get a little shady, you know. So all of those things we done, what I understand is. We went back there then, but, but now. So what we experienced back then is what we now believe <clears throat> through the Holy Spirit that these things exist. Now, Jesus done a whole bunch of teaching. I mean, again, proof. How much proof you need? I mean, what stood out to me the most was about this part of our lesson tonight is there's something that a lot of people forget that Jesus was actually trying to get everybody to understand. You must repent. See, that's what John did. John prepared away for him. You're not going to get no Holy Spirit. And, uh, and my grandma said, you lying like a snake. And, 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 then you, and, and then you 
<clears throat> stand up in front of everybody and saying, do you got the Holy Spirit? Well, again, where's the proof? It's got to be some, it's got to be some proof that, that the Spirit of God exists in you. Now, the thing that stuck with me was, if you remember, what happened in this world, this all was the fulfillment of his prophecy. All of this, this is what this is. This is a messianic prophecy. Uh, this was also an enlightenment. In other words, it ain't something that they, they didn't know. He's teaching it over again. There's one thing you see about Christ, he taught it over and over and over again. He, re he reminded them of the, of, the, of the things that he gives also what? Spiritual instructions. I heard somebody say that tonight. Now the difference between somebody giving you instructions uh, on a job, hey, go, go pick up that box over there. You don't need the Holy Spirit to pick up a box. But you need Holy Spirit to know where to put that box. Because I, I, I think all of us are part of what we do too with, with the enlightenment. Of what happens if somebody kind of gets on your nerves a little bit and, and, and you know, they tell you to do something. <clears throat> so that's a big difference between someone giving you instructions and then you're waiting on the Holy Spirit to guide you so some things you may say you wouldn't say. You know what I'm saying? Now, listen to it. The thing also that stood out to me was he told him to wait. And that is one of the hardest things. Now, I ain't gonna tell it on y'all, but I'll say it for me. I had to learn that waiting on God it can be challenging to you because you know why we most of the time want it right now so he told them wait so you won't get the Holy Spirit wait on it so, so when you get that he talks to them about his suffering about everything that he went through what he had to endure he talked about his resurrection. All of these things he's talking to them about. As I said before about repentance, about your remission, about your sins. All of these things he's talking about. And then he tells them, which we know a pastor were preaching about, this is our mission. They people don't know when you're given a mission, you you can't say, well, I I, I think. Uh, I, I, I don't know if I could do that. But first of all, he's given you direct orders to go out and do this. So that, see, he gives them a mission. But he also reminds them that when you go out there, you're not doing it in nobody else's name. I heard somebody talking tonight, and, and Pastor touched a little bit about them, the, 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 the Hebrew is like the black Hebrew. Now, see, the thing about that is, what name is they doing that in? Are you doing it? You're not doing that in Jesus' name. Yeah, they, they, you know, they're doing it to more or less to get a name for themselves. You, you, don't, need, you don't need a crowd to be a witness for Jesus Christ. <laughs> it just takes you. You know what you've been through. Only you can do that. Yeah. And somebody said about the the, the gospel universe and so uh i don't want to um, say it all but you can find in in, in, in uh, acts one and eight when when something is universal it, it goes everywhere christ does not expect uh evangelism to just stay right here in all of it everywhere we go you and i still have to go out and and and, and, and evangelize and then the other one I told you about a witness. Nobody is going to believe somebody that was not a witness. Pastor talked about earlier. I, I don't get caught up with them people talking about <laughs> I'm Apostle John Horn or whatever. 
you you know, if that's what he said he is, you know, that's what you say you are. But not according to the Bible. Because you have to understand what that means. You were not there when Christ rose from the dead. You, you weren't there. Uh, you, you weren't walking with him. You know, when it was, when it, you know, so how are you an, 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 an you know, what, them, them apostles? Now, I hate to say it, uh, that's a whole lot of dust standing up because, you know, you you made from dust. And and a dust that's that long over 2,000 years ago, man, if a little wind blow, you you, you can fall out. So that's why I say I learned that's foolishness. Yeah. Now, all of that stuff is just foolishness because why? He gives them what? A spiritual promise. He didn't just give you what he tell them when he said, when you stay there and wait, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you something that you need. And the fact he was going to give them the Holy Spirit, first of all, something they didn't even deserve. You didn't think about it. Look at what all the disciples were questioning Jesus all up to this time. Why you think that? Why, why you think that they, they deserve the Holy Spirit? <clears throat> but as you said before, doubt. And we talk about Thomas, and he he had Peter, and God forbid he had Judas. He had all that with him, but yet he took time to sit down and told him. If you just wait, he said, now I'm, I'm going to get you a blessing, but I need you to wait on it. And he said, I, I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you power. And I'm not just going to give you any power. This power is going to come from on high. And this is what this teaches us about, about the Holy Spirit. And I, 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 was, I was so glad, Pastor, I've been preaching on it. Because you'll be surprised how many people don't even know what the Holy Spirit is. Some of them say, man, I'm, I'm anointed. You, you're anointed for what? Hey, what are you anointed for? Anointing, that means just same thing that you're called out. God touched you, he touched me. That's all that is. It's nothing special that people are trying to do. They don't <clears> even <throat> know that the Holy Spirit comes from God. And I said before, and I'm going to leave it at that. If you don't repent, you'll never get it. And some pastor talked about, there are people sure and been in the church 30, 40 years. Now, I don't spare some of them. And if you ask them, brother, could you uh, pray for, oh, I, I can't do that, man, I can't do that. Now, wait a minute. You've been walking with God, you said, for 40 years. Out of 40 years, you hadn't got the Holy Spirit to learn how to pray yet. Mm. It, it teaches us something. It teaches us something how we have to wait on God. Not wait on, you know, situations, circumstances, but waiting on God gives us that opportunity to have, I heard somebody say tonight, spiritual power. See, this, this, this ain't no Austin energy here. So you can cut that off. They can cut that off anytime. But this this spiritual power, no one controls that but God. So Vernis, this is an outstanding lesson tonight. And I'm gonna, as I always do, I continue to encourage you and let God use you uh, and continue to use you. And, and and because there's always somebody, and I know Pastor said that, somebody watching you. Yeah. And my grandma told me, she said, sometimes the only book that people can read is you. You know what I'm saying? Some people don't know you the Bible, but they can look at you, watch you, how you carry yourself, how you conduct yourself as a Christian. Not in the way, but as a Christian. And so this is what the lesson is about. Learning how to wait on God to allow the Holy Spirit to manifest itself in us and whatever we need to do. God did already put it in us. Ain't nothing else stuff to my son. I can't, man, I, I can't sing. I can't pray. 
but you were okay. You don't have it. That's it. You just don't have it. Because if you have it, he's given it to you. And at that right pass, he didn't give you what? The spirit of fear. And right there, what did he give you? Power, love, and a sound mind. That's that's it. Thank you. You know, uh, I keep thinking about this word, I witness. <clears throat> and, you know, I think about during slavery and Jim Crow, you know, people always say, man, why, you know, why, 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 why would black people believe in the, in the white man's Bible when he was treating them? And I think about doing, especially during Jim Crow and slavery world, they said a black person couldn't be a witness against anybody. And, you know, people live their lives like that, but they also looked in the Bible and saw that God wanted them to be a witness to his glory. That's good. And so they looked at it and they said, well, that's man's law to say I can't be a witness, but God says I can. Uh -huh. And I think that's why they put their faith because God carried them through them hard times. Yes. And, you know, just something I, I just thought about. But, you know, one thing I'm learning, and you know, uh, this website I found today, uh, Historical Reliability, I think it's kind of helping me because, you know, you sometimes, you know, you, you you want to help people understand that these, these you know, these just aren't words in a book that is backed up by historical facts. It is, you know, uh, you know, like, you know, uh, Pastor says, there are geography that backs it up. You know, Deacon Hayes I always talk about the history of the world, what was going on in the world at that time that backs up the Bible. Yeah. So, you know, it's just good to, to find that there are some scholarly stuff out there that, ties, that, that pretty much says what Deacon Hayes says all the time. You know, this is what the Bible says, and this is the historical backing behind what was going on. So, you know, I, I've been able to find some good resources and I, I really appreciate y'all encouraging me to study, you know, and, and go beyond just writing down what's in the commentary of the Life Application Bible <laughs> and present that as information. So thank y'all. Uh, that idea, Pastor, you know, you mentioned it, you and Deacon Todd. I think that's a good idea that for our men's day coming up, we get us some shirts. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Ackerberry has a guy that, that does the shirts he did, the St. John's Association shirts. So if we can come up with, you know, what we want on there. And I really like that I witness is an I. And, you know, just come up with an ideal. And, you know, we got till the middle of June to kind of get that together. And I think it'd be cool for us to show up in our eyewitness shirts and our Callaway golf hats. <laughs> you know, kind of stand out and. I got a cap to wear now. <laughs> <laughs> Anything but a cowboy hat. Yeah. I do have a Sooners cap, so I can wear that. <laughs> you made it, Pastor. If you don't have a cowboy hat, they ain't gonna ask you about it. They ain't gonna ask you nothing about that. <laughs> what? So a cowboy fan been wandering through the desert for forty years? Only twenty seven. <laughs> but uh, I really appreciate all the commentary. Uh, Next week's lesson is going to be by Minister Michael Henderson. And, you know, this lesson started off, I think, this lesson next week and all of May and June will be in Acts. And we'll end out the quarter in Acts. So all those lessons are available up until June. But you know, that's once again, that's one thing we need to think about right now. Start planning for our men's 
annual celebration because it'll roll up on us real quick. But yo, know, that that T-shirt, I feel, I, I really think that would be a really good one. That's what we need to pursue. Let me know what what the prices are, brother Burns, because the guy that we use, I think all these shirts are like eight dollars. That that we'll go with that guy then. Yeah, we'll go with that guy. Let me ask you, brother, a question, man. Uh, Is that Sister Patrice is wanting um, women to sing? Was that right, Miss Sims? The women to sing to the the, the fathers on uh, Father's Day? And she was wanting to know what could we push our uh, men's day to the fourth Sunday? I have no yeah. problem with it. Yeah. She said she wanted the women, you know, most of the time we always do everything on Father's Day. She said she wants the, the mass choir, the women choir, the same to the men or something. Amen. Amen. The third Sunday. I think they're going to have, the you're going to have, you're going to have, you're going to have a breakfast for the men that same morning. <clears throat> and then the yeah. sister's going to say for the men that, that, that morning. And then we'll come back for Sunday. Yeah. Have our that, that sounds good to me. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Then that would be our just our regular uh choir day anyway, the fourth yeah, Sunday. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. Now let Pastor Bash know he'll, he'll, he'll make the decision. Yeah. Well, that's all we have. Uh uh I do want to uh first to pray for Albert Black, you know, yeah, he suffered a stroke yeah. over the weekend. So, you know, keep him in our prayers. How's he doing? I don't know. Uh, Mr. Spence told us Saturday it happened. So it had to happen either Thursday or Friday. It had to happen late Friday, I would say, or probably early Saturday because my daughter yeah, was it, it the happened. Job. Huh? Go it ahead. Happened, it happened Monday week ago. Monday week ago. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, you know that's yeah, Monday, Monday evening, board. Monday night. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I actually text his, text his wife and asked him how they were doing. I've not heard back from her, but I have another contact that I'll call tomorrow and see if I can get an update um, to see how he's doing. As far as I know, he is. Uh, I don't know what condition he's in. I know it, you know, early on he couldn't, couldn't talk or anything. Yeah, that's all I have. Like I said, Mr. Henson will give the lesson next week. Jesus empowers the disciples. And we have lessons for May. Uh, we'll go ahead and do our mission statement. And if I can get Dick and Hay to uh, close out in prayer. Amen. Man. We exist today. We exist today. To reflect Christ. Reflect Christ. To 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 reflect our purpose is to make disciples, make, make disciples, make consistent prayer, consistent prayer, prayer, Bible, Bible study, study, Bible study, fellowship, fellowship, fellowship service to our community, service to our community. We are empowered by God, empowered by God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. All right. Good night, everybody. Heavenly Father, we thank you that God, for allowing us to be able to gather together to worship you, Lord, to study your word. Yes, sir. We do believe that, Lord, that iron does indeed sharpen us. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. We pray God to continue to bless what we've learned here today. Please, God, so that we may edify these things in our lives. Help us, dear Father, uh-huh. from the witnesses that, that we sh- we need to be. Yes, sir. Inspire us. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Have mercy on us. <coughs> Strengthen our witness. Uh-huh. Pray to God for each household is represented here, dear God. Pray for His grace and mercy yeah. for all of our church. Oh, yes, yeah. sir. And Father, we will be looking over this old world that we need to see. God, in the trouble and turmoil, God, yeah. we continue to pray for those folks in the Middle East. Father, I can't help but believe that that brings a certain amount of sorrow in your life. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Let's continue to pray, Lord, so that you hold all things in your hands. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir
Yeah, mercy. Thank you, dear God, for our church. Yeah, this is Thank you, dear God, for our um, ability to serve. We yeah. just thank you, dear Lord. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. you continue. Thank continue to protect you. us and keep up your arms and grace and mercy around us. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, yeah. we pray this prayer. We all say amen. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right, Phil, I got to get out of here. Yeah, that was yeah. good. I was heard y'all heard said he going to pull the bus over. Y'all need to get off. <laughs> <laughs> good night, y'all. Good night, everybody. Good night, brothers. <laughs>